Okay, we're going to get started with our jazzing up your ECRI instruction. And I'm just going to figure out here how to advance my slide. Because I have... Julie, will you tell me if my slide is advancing? It is advancing. All right. So our professional development norms, we're just going to go ahead and go through them quickly. Since we are on a Google Meet, a lot of these are not going to be applicable to us right now. But the biggest thing is here is we're just going to be committed, responsible, respectful, and hopefully you are being safe. Our professional development norms are also to make sure you mute your microphone and turn on your camera if you're comfortable. And if you have any questions or comments, you can put them in the chat or you can also just contact your presenters, which are um, Leanne Fisher and Julie Butler. We're here to be your presenters. Julie, do you want to say hi? Hi, everyone. <laughs> so glad you could join us today. Yeah. I'm going to go back one more slide to our framework in Canyon School District, which is our MTSS, our multi-tiered system of supports. And everything we do here reflects that high quality academic and behavioral instruction for our students. And here's our emails one more time if you do want to reach out to us after you watch this Jazzing Up Your Ecri Bite Size PD. So hopefully you're in the right place if you're watching this or the recording. Our learning intentions and success criteria are I am learning how to jazz up my Ecri instruction so that I can engage my students in foundational skills. And I will know I'm successful when I can implement ideas shared at today's session. And I'm going to go ahead and have Julie jump in anytime she wants to as well. Okay, Julie? I will. Our agenda is going to be um, how are you currently using ECRI to teach? And then what are some examples that we'll show you about how to jazz it up? And then why it is liked from teachers. So thinking about ECRI, that is an acronym. It stands for Enhanced Core Reading Instruction. So how do you currently deliver your ECRI instruction to your students during your foundational block, foundation block? Um, just take a second to think about what that looks like and sounds like for you. <coughs> Excuse me. There are several ways to deliver your instruction. We've got teachers who use a document camera. We have teachers who are using multi-sensory strategies and activities in your Canvas course, and also using one of the platforms called Jamboard. Using the document camera and engaging for multi-sensory scaffolds, this is Amy Dinkelman at Ridgecrest Elementary, and she has a, an incredible perky pace, and she's got a lot of student engagement with students doing something, but it's also very consistent for her students. I'm going to go ahead and just play it for a few minutes so that you can see. Amy's also aware that we're sharing this tonight, and she's open to any questions or thoughts that you have around her instruction. She's a great teacher and willing to help. Uh, mm. All right. 
right, let's check it out, see how you did. Fun! Uh, fun. Your next word is ha. What is the word? Ha. 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 Okay. So the reason why we were sharing that is just to be looking at how she's only using her document camera, but she's got a lot of activities that the students are doing. They're not just sitting and getting. So one of the big pieces, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. I just want you to stop and think, what are some things that you noticed that made this so engaging? I'll give you about 30 seconds. Maybe a little less than that. But hopefully you reflected on some of the things that she was doing with her consistency, with her pushing up the sounds and having the students pull the sounds down. And then she applied that same thing and that same practice or routine when they took it to the dictation piece, which you can tell has that crisp routine, that crisp transition. And while they're doing that, she's walking around giving those reinforcement um, for their, their tickets for the students who are doing those right things and are on task. And then she's allowing herself that time to get ready while they're getting ready too. But that systematic approach to that um, routine is what's crucial for those students and being able to know what the expectation is every time they do that dictation piece or those pushing up of those individual sounds. You can see that the video on here is actually longer than what we just presented. So you can make a copy of this and you can watch this on your own to watch the full video. Or you can, like I said, you can always reach out to Amy. She is a great, uh, a great support. Julie, do you have anything you want to add to this at all? No, she's just a really great example of um, she's using really low tech, but making it really engaging. Mm -hmm. And the students like it. I mean, they're not using the manipulatives as far as like an Elkonin box or dice or cubes, but their fingers are a great manipulative to be able to really check in and get feedback on who's able to see all those sounds as well. So it's really visual of what they're learning too. Uh, the next slide, oopsies. let's try it this way. Uh, the next one is our Crescent Elementary first grade team. They're using blended learning with ECRI at Crescent Elementary. We've got Angela, Marcy, and Marcy, and we're just going to play this video to show you how they use blended learning with ECRI in their first grade classroom. Hi everyone. Hi everyone, we are, we are the first grade, grade team, team at Crescent Elementary, Elementary School. School and we, and are, we here are here today, today just to talk to you a little, little bit about, about how we use ECRI in our classrooms, our classrooms this year. year. Okay, okay, so, so we, we used it two different, different ways, and, and the, the way that you'll see that we use it in my classroom is a whole, whole group, group of instructions. So, it'll, it'll, this would be what we do on day one and day two, and day two of retreat. retreat. So, so, we do our regular foundation plot, we teach the phonics, phonics skill, skill at our school, we do coding, so we teach you how to code it, all of the things that you need to know about the phonics skill, and then we do the sound practice and the regular word reading together, and then we'll also do the dictation and the decodable routines from every. And then, and then on, days on days three and four, and four after, after they've, they've already, already been, been taught, taught that phonic skill or the phonic, phonic skills skills for the week, we, we are, are just practicing, practicing it throughout, throughout the rest of the week. week. So, we so we use it as, as an independent station, station or independent work that, work that they're doing on their own iPad, iPad that, we that we have pre-recorded pre an ECRI lesson on and, and, and uploaded it to Canvas. And, and so the kids are working independently at their desks. And, and they all they have, have their own headphones, headphones on, on and that, that frees the teacher, the teacher up to be able, to, able to, to pull different, different kids back, back that they need a little extra support, support on that or, or walk around, around the classroom, classroom and check in on kids, kids to see how they're, how they're doing with that skill. skill. And, and while, while they're, they're doing their, their video, video of ECRI on their, their Canvas, Canvas app, they, they are either, either saying, saying something, something out loud so you can hear the kids in the class how they've got their headphones on so they're not really paying really attention, attention to each other as much, as much. Or, or they, they are, are writing, writing words, words down, down with dictation, or um, um, like, like uh, Marcy said, said, that we do coding, coding at, our at our school, school. so a, a lot of, a lot of the times they're, they're coding, coading the words, words and practicing reading, reading those words. words. So, they're so they're all doing, doing something, something, and, and it's, it's a really great, great way to engage the kids in that because, because they, they all get their own level of practice if they need to pause or start over or whatever they can do that because it's an individual iPad that they're using. And then, and then one, one other way, way that we have, have used Ecri that, that has found, found a lot of engagement is by letting, letting kids, kids be the teacher. teacher. So, we'll so we'll project the page up on the board, board and, and then let a kid, kid be the pointer, pointer and, and say the cues, the cues whether, whether it's words, words or sounds, sounds and, and they, they get, get to, to be the one that, that goes, goes through. And, and we usually do a couple rows at a time and then let the neck neck let that kid pick somebody else to be the teacher. And that has brought in a lot of fun and engagement for the kids. Thanks so much. 
So let's go ahead and we'll see some of their examples that they just shared with you. Hi, Hi everyone. everyone. Sorry, I don't know why I keep doing that. So here's one of the examples that Marcy was talking about. Students practice reading words independently using their iPads while the teacher monitors or works with individual students. So this video will show you how the teachers have pre-recorded an ECRI routine lesson and the students are going to be responding to that expectation. So if the teacher is saying think word and they're saying it, so they have their headphones on and they're not necessarily listening to the other students. For the sake of this video, we did have the student not use the headphones so you could hear what the teacher was saying during that time. Okay, here is our last group of words. Again, we are going to uh, think when the arrow is to the side. And when I say word, you will say the word. I will do the first row with you, and then I want you to do the rest of the words on your own. Ready? Word. Cloud. Word. Town. Word. Word. Ground. Ground. Word. Apple. All right, now show me what you know. Remember to say these out loud so your teacher can hear what you are saying. Ready? Word. Down. Word. Dumbo. Word. How. Word. Word. Okay, Julie, do you have anything you want to add to that of what was happening? Okay, here is our... Okay. Julie, this is your slide. Do you want to start right here? Sorry, I realized that I was on mute there for a oh, second. No <laughs> That's totally fine. One of the things that I love about this team at, at Crescent is they've done some real intentional planning to be able to um, help these kids, support these kids and scaffold these kids so that they can do some independent learning with some scaffolds from the teacher while um, the teachers are able to pull kids back to a table to work with them or they can walk around the room and check on, on students and give them immediate feedback as to how they're doing with their independent practice during this time. So um, I think this has been really innovative, how they've chosen to, um, to be able to implement this part of their ECRI instruction throughout their skill-based time, as well as their foundation block time. So in it, it allows the student to be able to access these materials at any time as well. So if they have a child that happens to be out sick or taking a vacation or something like that, the child is able to access this via their um, class Canvas course as well. Uh, it's great for parents to be able to see how ECRI instruction also works in the classroom. So this next student, you're seeing some more of the same thing with them. They're doing, they're practicing um, their skills, their phonics skills that they're learning through their foundation block. One thing that's important to note here with this slide is this child is going to be writing words. And one of the things that they do at Crescent Elementary is they have sax and phonics, which not every school in our district uses. So some of the things that you'll see this student do when they're working is you'll, you'll see them coding the words. And that is a function of instruction that they've had through sax and phonics. So, that might not be what's happening at your school, but they've contextualized this to meet the needs of, of the students at their school. So if you want to hit play on that, Leanne. Yep, I sure will. Oh, 
Mm -hmm. So Leanne, you can go ahead and hit pause and you'll just okay. notice that the student is just, um, has the headphones on. They're following the directions that the teacher is giving within the video um, through Canvas and they're writing their words down and they're coding those words according to the directions of the teacher. So really engaging, the teacher is able to walk around as well and see what the student is doing and check their work. Once again, the child can access this anytime through their Canvas account. So they can do it at school, they can do it at home, depending on you know, what the teacher has um, asked them to do. So let's go on to the next slide. All right. We're not going to play this video for you, but we definitely wanted to show you that the decodable text routine um, that is outlined in, in um, the ECRI materials goes right along with our foundation block. And there are lots of different strategies that you can use within um, the decodable text reading portion of, of ECRI. So we have linked in the presentation scaffolds, scaffolding difficult texts for um, student access. And this document can also be found in your curriculum map. So you always have access to this. We've noted at the bottom of this slide, the specific times where you can see um, at minute one and 32 seconds, they're reading regular, irregular, and sight words. Um, and at minute 428, there's echo reading that's going on. And then she has the class choral read at minute 923. So that practice portion is really important. Once you've gone through these phonemic awareness skills that tie to the phonics skill, and then we go ahead and have that, that dictation piece, and then it's it ties back into the reading practice. So making sure that you are getting to that, that practice piece of reading decodable text that follows the phonics pattern that the students have been learning is really essential. There are lots of different ways to make that engaging. In this case, Marcy does um, practice with the whole class, then she'll have them, um, she'll have them echo read, she'll have them curl read, and then ultimately she has them go and partner read together. So um, I think that it's really important though that we always make it to connecting text to the phonics skill that we're working on. All right. Oops, sorry, Julie. Hang on. It keeps totally fine. It does that to me well. <laughs> One of the other ways that um, we like to jazz up our ECRI is. Um, this is one of the tech tools that we use that we like to use, and it's called a Jamboard. I know that there are many, many teachers out there in kindergarten, first and second grade that are using um, PowerPoint presentations as well mm -hmm. to be able to um, jazz up their ECRI as well. So um, one of the things that I would really recommend is that you reach out to your colleagues and see what they're doing. Uh, at our tech summit this last summer, we heard lots of great examples from all kinds of teachers across the district of ways that they were making this um, really engaging for students and easy use for the teacher to be able just to pull this up and to manipulate each of those pieces. So um, I have the Jamboard open on my end. Um, do you have the Jamboard open on your end, Leanne? Is that no, but I can do that right now, Jules. Can you let yeah. me make a copy of it? And then so you do that and then you can, can see it. In. Okay. And I'm on slide one right now. Okay. Can I'm not, see it? I'm not seeing you on the Jamboard. I'm just seeing the presentation. One of the things that I'm, I'm wondering if you click. Let me go to. Let me go back here real quick and go to my sharing options or my presenting options. Oh, it's going to have me stop presenting. No, I don't want it to do that. Let me try this, Julie. Can hmm. We're okay just to talk about it unless you want to be able to show this off. Well, they'll have access to this, so maybe for time's sake, so people don't have to problem solve with us. Right. So let's let's just talk about this right now. When we, um, 
you can see that the link is is there. It's in blue. It says Jamboard in blue and it's underlined. That's going to link you and force you to make you a, a copy of this particular Jamboard that we've created. There are many slides on this Jamboard and it goes through the progression of a regular ECRI lesson. So it will start with, um, for example, it starts with irregular word reading and it goes from irregular word reading um, well, it introduces new words, and then on slide two, it will have practice of those words. And then it goes into phoneme blending. And we have some chips. You can see on the presentation slide that there is an Elkonin box there with chips underneath it. And those chips are movable by you as the teacher on this Jamboard. You can click on there and you can manipulate and move the sounds up as you are working with your students. So that's a really nice feature there. Also, then we go into our sound spelling card introduction um, and, and then sound spelling review. So it's that grid of all of the sounds that they're learning that they're gonna go through. And this Jamboard continues to go through each and every one of those pieces of your ECRI lesson all the way to the decodable read. Um, that is at the end. So you'll notice that you can even take those slides and put those on your Jamboard and have the class read it together while they're even sitting at the carpet. Or you can choose to have your students take their own book and go back to their desk and choral read or echo read with you or have them want dyad partner read um, depending on how you want to structure your lesson and what the needs of your students are. All of those things are available within this Jamboard. It makes it really nice for you to be able to project that. You can hold your iPad in front of you. You don't even have to look back at the screen that's behind you so that you can face your students while you're manipulating all of these pieces on the Jamboard. Makes it really, really nice. Um, and if you're using your iPad, great. If you're using your computer, also great. The great thing is that you can be looking at it and your students at the same time and, and manipulating those, um, those chips to represent the sounds as you're pushing those up into that Alcon inbox. Um, that is a great tool. Many of you are already using those PowerPoint presentations or even Google Slides that you have um, really created those on. No, you're totally fine. So whatever is working for you and your colleagues, I think is really great. I love that you guys are interested in finding out better ways to make it more engaging. One of the things that I do want to remind you of is that you are the teacher and you get to decide. Um, and you get to infuse your own personality into your instruction, just like you saw Amy Dickelman do that, just like you saw um, our fabulous first grade team from Crescent Elementary. Um, they use their own teacher agility and planning to make it useful for their school. Um, and so I, I think it's great what is actually happening out in our district. And I recommend that you reach out to your colleagues and find out what they're doing and what's working great for them. Leanne, thank you, Leanne. Did it advance? Yeah, it did advance. <laughs> so these are all of the reasons why we really like ECRI. One of the reasons is that it aligns to our reading street. You don't have to go out and make new materials. You can just pull those sound spelling cards from our reading street curriculum that we already have. And those are the materials that you'll be using for this um, foundation block experience. We also like that it's in explicit instruction in the foundation block um, and that it it links directly to what it is that you're learning right now with your letters training. So that foundation walkthrough for letters is exactly what is happening in ECRI. And if you are following this ECRI plan, you should be able to check all those boxes on that walkthrough. Um, one of the other things that we love is it connects to all the routine rings that we have from our academies. So if you were fortunate enough to attend one of those academies with Lincolns in, in the last few years, all of these routines that we have for our K2 teachers are um, ways to engage and reinforce instruction in ECRI. 
Another reason that we love it is that it, it follows that progression. So we start with phonemic awareness and the phonemic awareness sounds that we're using are going to progress into our phonics um, skills that we're using. And then that, and then it's going to progress to connection to text. So whatever phonics skill that we're learning, we are going to be reading that in our decodable text as well and practicing it and working on our fluency practice for that um, same that same phonics skill, which was previously a phonemic awareness skill that we started out with during the day. Um, that's one of the reasons that we love ECRI so much is it just follows that nice progression with whatever skill that we're working on from phonemic awareness, from hearing the sound to attaching the print to it and to finally actually reading it and practicing that in, in connected text. Any other things that you'd like to add to that, Leanne? Nope, that was beautifully stated. All right. That's one of the things that we love, all the reasons we love ECRI. So I will point, um, give it back to you to reinforce our learning intention of the day, Leanne. Sure will. So our learning intention and success criteria, that teacher uh, clarity today was, I am learning how to jazz up my ECRI instruction so that I can engage my students in foundational skills. And I know I am successful when I can implement ideas shared at today's session. So just to recap, thinking about your pacing and being able to have those consistent routines for your students, that helps with that implementation and that jazzing up piece, right? Because we know that curriculum doesn't teach students, teachers do. And like Julie had said, adding your own style to it and jazzing it up and just being excited. When you're excited, that reflects on the students' learning as well. If you're excited, they get excited. Um, thinking about how you can embed those pieces to extend into your Canvas and into your SBI time, as well as looking at that Jamboard as one option as a platform to really be able to take it to that digital piece. Not all times is it conducive for that piece, but a lot of times you'll be able to see that it's a quick little copy and paste to put into that Jamboard that really gets the students engaged because it's not something that's just on the document camera. So just different options, you know your students best, you know which one they would um, be receptive to when you're implementing one of these ideas. And whichever one you choose today, I know Julie and I would really love to hear about what you did to change your instruction to give your students more of that um, explicit routine and then just to really jazz it up so that it doesn't seem not as engaging. Um, if you have any questions for Julie and I, please let us know. Our emails are at the very top. It's julie.butler at canyonsdistrict.org and then Leanne fisher at canyonsdistrict.org. Thanks so much. This will be linked into the Canyons U. And um, if you have any questions, please let us know. Julie, do you have anything else you want to add? I think you've you've said it all, Leanne. All right. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. I'm going to have Julie stop sharing whenever you're ready, Julie. I'm stopping right now. Okay. Maybe it's me that has to stop sharing. Nope, it's me.